everybody, it's Eugene Lee Show here, and I want to welcome everybody to Click 3D. This is the program where we talk about photogrammetry and how you can use a digital camera and some software to make some 3D models. Now, for a while I've been talking about things like GoPros and uh, drones and um, poles, and I've showed some other projects that I had with poles, but I've never really addressed pole photogrammetry in particular. And so I thought that that is what I would do today. So I have this parking lot that's out here and what I thought I would do is take the GoPro and we'll try a couple of things. One is use video to capture the area and then the other one is to use photographs to capture the area. And I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll take the face of the building here. Yeah, maybe the face of the building would be pretty good. Uh, that wouldn't be too bad. And then I can uh, process everything in uh, software, maybe in like Metashape or 3DS Zephyr and we would go from there. Now, what are the benefits of using a pole? Well, the first major one is, of course, that it's not a drone. And so drones have some limitations depending on where you are, depending on the license that you have. Uh, you don't need any special kind of exceptions or permit or anything like that. And of course, you can get up pretty high with a pole. You'd be surprised what that, you know, what a couple of meters or a few meters in elevation will do for you, especially when you have a wide angle camera like a GoPro, which has a, a fairly wide field of view. So what I thought I would do is I'll talk about some of the equipment that I have. It's really really basic. Um, you don't need a lot of equipment to do pole photogrammetry, just a couple of little things and even there's even stuff you could probably 3D print or make yourself. So um, let me talk about them one by one and uh, go through some of the advantages and disadvantages and we'll go from there. So the first one is let's start with the camera. How about that? So I've got a, uh, I've got a GoPro 7 here and um, now of course I've done this, the first time I did it in fact was before I had a GoPro. So I actually had a digital SLR camera that was mounted on top of a pole and I had a remote. So I just bought a, a remote and basically I'd, I'd hold it up and I'd click, take the shot, move, click and take the shot. Now the downside to that was I didn't have any kind of device to look at. So I didn't know exactly what it was capturing, but what I would do is I'd kind of go up, take a couple of shots, put it down, review what it was. And once I had an idea, then I would just go ahead and uh, photograph the entire area. So that's one way to do it on the cheap if, uh, you know, if, if that's all you have. Another way is to use your digital camera. And so a lot of cameras will have a, uh, a timer, a function, or like a time lapse function where you can just set it for every five seconds or something like that. And basically, you know, kind of go up and kind of move, you know, stop for 10 seconds, go to the next you know, position, stop for 10 seconds. And that's another way that you can collect a number of photographs if you just wanted to use your uh, phone. And of course, you know, there's a lot of sport cameras now and the advantages of these too is that they're light, they're small, they're easy to get up on the pole, and of course uh, this comes with an app that you use on your phone. So once I have the GoPro up top and I've got my phone, I can look to see exactly what I'm shooting and then just trigger it from down there. So there's a number of options uh, in terms of cameras and uh, what you want to mount on top of the pole. Now in terms of the actual poles themselves, uh, I've got a couple here. So uh, this one here is just a, a painter's pole that you can pick up at any hardware store. And down here it's, uh, uh, it's, it's not metallic on the bottom, but it is over here. So it's aluminum. And if I just hit this button over here, uh, there's basically an aluminum pole that extends. This particular one will get me to about uh, four and a half meters, five meters maybe. And uh, it's pretty good. It's just a painter's pole that you get at the hardware store, no big deal. Now, I actually had to make some modifications here. I changed the tip because I was using it for a number of different things. I'll talk about the adapter in a second. Um, but what I will say is if you're in an area where there's going to be a lot of electrical poles on a roadway because you're doing crash reconstruction or whatever, get a, get a, um, an insulated pole or something that doesn't conduct electricity just in case you touch up on the wires. You don't want to do that. So uh, always be careful when you have the pole. Uh, be wary of you know stuff that's overhead, especially when it's electrical wires. Now, if you needed something that was you know smaller or even larger, uh, there are things that you can get that are really really large. If you go online, you'll you'll find these telescoping poles. Uh, people sell them. Uh, some of them are, are quite expensive, but I mean they'll get you uh, you know extremely high uh, if you need to. And uh, this is just a painter's pole and I've got an adapter on the top here, but let me just take this off so you can see and I'll walk up here. 
so you can see it right here. But that's just a regular uh, painter's pole with uh, you know the, the standard threaded end, and so these are uh, broom handles and things like this will uh, have this kind of uh, connection up here or this kind of threaded uh, connector. So this is something you can get again just the hardware store. This was just a small painter's one that I have, and sometimes for smaller things, uh, this is super uh, useful. Now, how do you get the uh, camera onto the pole? Well, in order to do that what you do is you need an adapter, okay? So this is one that I bought years ago. I don't even know where this came from, um, but it's just a cylinder that has a threaded end here and on the front. This is a quarter 20 thread. Uh, you can even get these in different sizes. So the quarter 20 is the standard size that you would have on a tripod and you're good to go. And if I take this, you can just thread this in here like that. Uh, there's also a set screw on here if you have a look at that and that set screw will lock this in so it doesn't go flying anywhere and you don't lose your expensive camera. Now on this large pole I actually use this for another purpose and uh, I, I cut off what I had here to make an adapter, a different type of adapter. Now I have a 3D printer, so there's some things that I can do that maybe some people don't have the ability to, but this piece here, and I'll, I'll walk up here and I'll show you what this one is. This is actually from another tripod. It was just a cheap tripod and it had this uh, uh, little lock over here, a threaded lock kind of thing. And it's just an empty cylinder on this end. And guess what? Well, it fits directly over the, uh, the, the, the tripod here. But what I did was where this uh, threaded portion is, there's actually a little hard to see maybe, but you'll see it here. I just put a little hole here and uh, once, oops, once I thread this in, it'll be perfectly uh, locked in place. Oh, let me pick that up. Okay. So I'll do that here. Let me just put this in. I'm just gonna put it in where the little hole is like that. And then once I put this in, it goes right through and once it's partially through the hole, this thing's locked in place, it's good to go. That's also a quarter 20 thread on the top and I can just screw the GoPro in there if I need to. All right, now the other thing is um, if you, if you're gonna be carrying a pole around and you're gonna be using the app, um, although the camera isn't all that heavy because uh, it's a GoPro, if you do have a heavier camera on there, you're really gonna need both hands to kind of stabilize the pole. And so it's gonna be difficult to work with the app. So what I've done is I've devised something that I can put the phone inside of. And so again, this is all hardware you can find uh, just about anywhere else. So let me, uh, let me show you what I've got here. So on the top, this is just a phone um, adapter and it has a threaded connection like the regular tripod connection, which is the quarter 20. Then what I did was I took a piece of threaded rod and if you have a long uh, quarter 20 screw, you can just cut off the head and then just use the threaded portion. And I have a couple of quarter 20 nuts that tie into one of these little, uh, it's like a little C-clamp and you just kind of tighten it up and it'll just uh, tighten up onto any object. And this has been really useful um, if you want to put it up on a, uh, whatever, a shelf, a, a end of a table or whatever. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on the pole at about the height that I need and I'll put my phone in here using the app. And so I'll be able to carry this around and kind of very quickly hit the button to start recording when I'm using video or if I'm taking a photograph, then I'll just be snapping photos uh, that way. So um, I could actually put it into time lapse or and then just take a photo every five seconds or so that would work too. But usually what I like to do is take photographs and you know shoot them myself kind of get into a position and then take the shot. Now when I'm taking the pole I could hold the pole up higher or what I can do is I can actually leave the base on the ground for stability and then just use one hand that way. So that that is another option too. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get set up. I'm just gonna put the pole together with the camera, with this and the, um, the phone here so that I can get uh, the app going and everything else. And we'll, uh, we'll record it all and go from there. Let's see how it works.
Okay, I think I'm all set up. I think that I've got everything. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shoot the uh, sort of the back end of this building. And so I'm gonna reposition the cameras. I'm gonna set this up to take video and then I'm gonna go back again and I will take a number of photographs and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so uh, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna run you through the setup here of what I've got. So there's just a, an iPhone here. I've got it in my little, uh, uh, you know, holder and it's on the pole. So it's actually at, you know, about eye height right now for me. So I've got the pole on the ground. So I don't have to be running around kind of lifting it up and down to get it to um, the proper height that I need. And I've got the GoPro on the top right here. So let me get this going. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start the GoPro. Okay, that looks like it's going. And I have to tell the GoPro, um, I want to connect so what I do is I swipe down I'm going to preferences and this may be different on a new GoPro but right now on the uh, on the 7 uh, I just swipe down I go to connections I go to connect device and then I have to go um, go to the app okay so once that's done up here I'm gonna go back to my app over here and I'm gonna go like that and I'm gonna open up the new app which is called quick from GoPro and I'm gonna say uh, control your GoPro so I'm gonna click on that I just heard the beep, so that maybe that's a good sign. And it is in uh, video mode right now. So at the bottom of the screen, I can see it says video mode. Now, I can go to settings and I can look and say, okay, what do I got? You know, I've got um, 1080 right now. I can look at this and say, okay, do I wanna do something uh, bigger? Maybe I wanna go to 4K. Well, why not? If we're gonna be doing video, go big or go home, right? So let's do that. Let's get uh, a nice uh, large video, frames per second. Oh, I don't need anything more than 30, I don't think, so that's fine. I could even go to 24 and that would be okay. So um, I'm done, that's what I want. You can see that I got a really wide field of view there, it's great. And uh, I can just go ahead and start recording and then go from there, but I need to extend the GoPro so that I can get it even higher. So let me do that. All right. Okay, this is gonna go up pretty high. And I may have to, okay, that's the top. No, nope, let me go down a bit. So it locks, it's got a lock in. Gotta hear it click. There we go. So it just clicked now. Now if I go up, you'll see this is a bit different. So with the GoPro up there, there's a little bit of wobbling, but man, I got a really good shot here. So I think what I'm gonna do is just stick with this and I'm gonna do my best to kind of walk uh, sideways and then I'll, I'll make two passes and just kind of leave it at that. So here we go. I'm gonna put this down here. I'm gonna go record. Okay, it looks like it's recording at the moment. So let me just start walking like this, making sure I get the whole building. It looks pretty good. And I get the top. I get uh, part of the parking lines there that are on the bottom. Now this is a little wobbly. Um, there's one part of the pole that uh, isn't all that secure, but it's not doing too bad. And if I keep a pretty steady pace and hold this pretty well, I'll be okay. Gotta make sure I don't get too close. And I've just walked that way, which is fine by me. And I'm gonna turn, and I'm gonna back up a bit more, but I'm gonna point this a bit down now. So it's hanging a bit down. So it gets more of like an aerial view, uh, like it would on a drone. And let's see what that does for us. See if we get a nice uh, set of images on the ground. And that would be kind of cool. So there we go. And I'm just gonna continue on here, almost done. So there is a little bit of wobble. I gotta be careful um, when you're walking with it. Obviously video is not always the best but it's something. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm gonna slowly point it back up here, put it down, and I'm gonna stop this. And like that. Okay, that looks like it stopped. So that's pretty good for this part. Now I'm gonna take photographs. So I need to switch this over. So now I'm in photos and I can go back to the settings and just have a look at what I have. Uh, it looks like it's fine. It's uh, 12 me megapixel wide. I could choose something smaller um, or like linear or something like that. But I, I think I'm okay with this since it's gonna be photographs. All right, now for this, I'm gonna wanna stay a little bit still. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna face, face the building and when I feel comfortable, then I'm just gonna hit photo. Okay, that's a photo. 
and then it's good. And I'm going to take a few steps this way. And I'm going to do the same thing. Actually, you know what? I might be able to just put this down on the ground and really keep his... I think so. I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to hit picture. That's good. I'm going to do the same thing. A few more steps. So I'm going to take about five steps in between each photo. Uh, the, the GoPro has a really wide field of view, so, um, you know, I, I don't have to make really tight uh, photos, you know, side by side kind of thing. This is uh, plenty of overlap between the photographs. Okay. Like this. Looks pretty good. And this one here. Not bad. And this one here. Yeah, the images look pretty good actually. All right, and we've got a nice day here today too, so I'm kind of happy about that. All right. All right, like this. Great. So these were kind of like my overalls, my wide shots. And what I could do is I could even lower the pole. And uh, let me do that. I'm just gonna move this over. I'm gonna lower this a bit and I'm gonna get a little bit closer because I'm getting really good shots. So what I'm gonna do is the same as before. I'm gonna pretend like I'm a drone and do something like this. Now what I could do is I could just point the camera further down, uh, but let me get a little bit closer. No, I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna do it like that. Get nice and close and, and try to pick up the stuff on the ground with enough detail. Okay, and I'll just hold it, try to hold it as steady as I can. And here I might take a few more tight shots. Great. I've got this trailer, so maybe this trailer might be interesting. And I'll just do a couple of photos here, like that. Something like this. Great. And then something like this. That's great. Something like this. So we get into all those little nooks and crannies. All right, and the other thing too is I can always take the GoPro down after, right? And I can hold it by hand and just get really close and get exactly what I need. So I'll do that one and I'll just do the rest kind of normally, kind of going quickly here like that. Now you, this is a 12 megapixel uh, image that this is taking. So you can imagine if you have a really nice DSLR up there that's, you know, 24 megapixel or you know, 30 something or whatever, uh, you can get some really, really great shots. And, you know, I was just telling somebody the other day, you know, when you're talking about drones, well, they're always in the perfect position because where's the light always coming from? Well, it's coming from the sky down to the ground. So, you know, the light is always behind you and it's just in the right place. And so usually you'll notice that whenever you get drone shots or um, nice aerial shots, they just, they just look good. They always look good. And, you know, drone shots are great for photogrammetry. They almost always reconstruct really well. So, okay, hopefully I'm not bouncing around too much. And I'm just gonna finish this off with this last set of uh, lines. And then I think what we'll do is we'll take a couple of uh, rows of the parking lot and we'll see how that goes. Like that, okay. Now, probably when I'm processing these, I'm gonna skip a lot of the, you know, just the process. I'll just let it process and see what it looks like. I am interested in the difference between 4K video and, you know, a really nice uh, image. So that'll be helpful to see what the differences are there. Okay, so that's, that's it for me, uh, for those two things. And that could actually be enough. Um, let me come back here. So. Uh, you know, this setup seems to be working really well. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, if you're doing this for hours, your arms are going to hurt. So it's nice to have it uh, some kind of a device to hold it down at the bottom. And interestingly, the first time I saw 
I think pole photogrammetry was in Germany and I was at a conference in Neuss near Dusseldorf and uh, some of the police people there, um, we did a simulated car accident outside and what they did was uh, they pulled out this telescoping pole that had a base with wheels so they just kind of could kind of like wheel it down the road. I thought it was a great idea and uh, you know it's something that you could easily rig up with some you know some plywood and some wheels you can get at the hardware store so you know for those of you that are really ambitious uh, it's something that you could uh, do for sure so I think what I'm going to do is I'll do a couple of rows of photos and then I'll do a couple of rows of video and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to walk uh, from from maybe from around here to the end then I'm going to move over and I'm going to walk backwards taking photos all the way back and then on the next one, what I'm going to be doing is taking video. And with the video, I'll walk forward and then I'll shuffle over and then I'll walk back. So I won't get this part back here, but everything sort of in front of the camera, uh, you should be able to see. And I may even just go down the middle and then kind of down the side here. So let me start with um, photographs. And should I go higher? No, I don't think I need to go higher. But what I may do, just because I'm getting the roadway, and I don't want to catch stuff that's way, way down there, is I'm just going to tilt the camera forward a bit. So it's about a 45 degree angle down, so it's pointed more down. It's just easier for me to manipulate. Let me see that. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. All right, I'm going to start in the middle here, like this. And I think what I'm going to do is, and I'm just going to turn this a bit because I can see the way that the camera is tilted. There we go. I need the the iPhone right behind sort of behind it facing the opposite direction and I am gonna lift it up more I'm gonna go all the way these are photos no problem uh, there we go so now we've got this way way up and I almost get the whole parking lot in one shot so uh, like I said I almost feel bad I'm not getting the back part but I think this will be good enough so let me take a picture and I'll take one two three four five steps and I'll take another one. Let me do that again. Uh, you can see that if you're doing something like this, you can cover a very large area with no time at all. And I think the other thing you'll see is that photographs will probably be better when we process them. Uh, the GoPros do have a little bit of distortion. It's not always an issue because a lot of the software will figure out the distortion, but um, I think photographs are still the best. They seem to always work out. Uh, another thing you'll notice here is that uh, you'll probably see that there's going to be a shadow. Now it's not really strong sun because there's a little bit of um, cloud, but I can see as the cloud moves out of the way, my shadow tends to, uh, to show up. So you'll see part of the pole and part of my shadow in the photographs. So sometimes um, it's always good to take photos from a different direction. So right now the sun is behind me, casting my shadow forward. What I can do is I can sort of take a shot at like a 45 degree angle or start to shift a bit so that the, uh, the shadow doesn't get caught in the image. So here we go. And I think this is gonna be as far as I'm gonna go. Great. Okay, I am going to shift over like this and that'll be my overlapping set of images. And backwards so from there one two three four five or so that's good all right that's good take some more photos another advantage of having the camera pointed straight down is that you won't pick up stuff that's really far away from you uh, the GoPro because it's such a wide angle uh, you'll see in some of these images and as I'm doing this that um, you pick up stuff like way, way far away. So when it does the reconstruction, um, it does tend to get stuff, um, objects, or it tends to reconstruct things which are probably not in the area that you're interested in. Uh, another problem is, well, one way to solve that is to point the camera further down, so like straight down, but then the problem with that is that you end up becoming part of the photo. Uh, because it's such a wide angle that it'll pick up your pole, your feet, your shadow, everything else. And yeah, we don't want that inside of the uh, photogrammetry reconstruction. Uh, in some of the other videos I've done, you'll know that we can mask those kinds of things out. But I always say, start with a good photo and 
It'll make your life a heck of a lot easier afterwards because you're not editing stuff or doing stuff in Photoshop or you're not masking stuff in the software. So that would be okay. Let me go back. And I think we're almost here. Okay, that might be good enough. I can see the camera can see me now. Maybe I'll just do one more back here like this. All right, and then I think that's good enough. Okay, cool. So now what we're gonna do is the video. Now the video, eh, it's gonna be a little bit shaky. Uh, let me look at this. Uh, let me just check, make sure that I'm on. Uh, yeah, I'm still on 4K, so that's okay. Um, now, I think because I'm using video, another little tip that I would say is I may bump this up to 60 frames a second. And the reason for that, it will make the file size larger, but the good news is that um, it'll help to avoid blurring and shaking because when I export the frames, they're at a higher shutter speed, they're faster, so it should be a little bit better for me. And uh, that's a little trick sometimes I use. I'll go and um, use like 120 frames a second or something like that. Um, it just depends. Sometimes resolution is better, sometimes having more frames is better. Okay, let's give this a shot. So I need to walk this and I'm just gonna try and do this carefully. So here we go, we're gonna start recording. There we go. And I'm gonna walk straight. Now I don't get a preview with this. Um, so I just need to be steady, walk as far as I think I need to go, make sure that I cover the areas. Don't you know, feel bad to overshoot what it is that you're, you want. In fact, you should always do a little more, right? You never wanna stop exactly in the area that you're interested in. You actually wanna stop someplace past that and make sure you get plenty of coverage overall. So uh, just with this, what I've got up here, I think that's okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift sideways like that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna walk backwards. So now walking backwards is a little bit trickier, I'm seeing. Okay, so I'm just gonna lean the pole a little more forward and let's see what that does. But that seems okay, I'm wobbling around a little bit. Let me go a little bit higher. All right, so that seems okay. I don't have to race, I'll just go slow because I don't wanna wipe out. <laughs> walking backwards is not the best maybe. All right, and Let's see, almost there, almost there. And I think that's about it. Okay, I'm gonna stop it here. I could have done more. Um, let me stop it there, everything stopped, looks okay. So let me bring this down like that. And there you go. All right, well, there you have it folks. <laughs> You know, if this was uh, a small crash scene or collision scene, if this was a small crime scene, um, I would have had this already. So, you know, by myself here, um, you know, I did some things twice, but you can capture a lot in a very small or short amount of time with just a few little tools here. But now let's go check on the computer and find out what this is gonna look like. Video versus the images. All right, so we're back at the computer here, and what we're going to be doing is processing the images and the video for uh, the you know the side of the building that we had, and then also for the uh, main part of the parking lot. So let's start with the images; those are always uh, easier. I'm just going to get some uh, in my other screen here. I'm going to start with the building images, and I'm just going to drag and drop those in here, and that'll start up the project. I'm just going to go next and I'm going to fly through this. I'm not really going to uh, spend a lot of time explaining what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I'm just going to hit some defaults here and I'm going to go ahead and run. So uh, this won't take very long, but again, uh, because the video is getting a little bit long, I'm just going to pause and come back when it's all done. Okay. This has been reconstructed in terms of the sparse images. So you can see that I've got, um, you know, all the images, you can see the little blue things here are the camera positions. In fact, I can, let me break those, uh, make those a little bit larger for you. And where is that here? Here we go, scale, there we go, something like that. So you can actually see uh, where they were and that I went higher on the first one and then lower on the second one. And so that looks pretty good. Uh, what I'm gonna do though is I'm going to continue processing this. And once we get it finalized, then, um, you know, I'll just show you what we got. 
then we put in the video and then we'll compare. So I'm going to stop talking, just get processing and I'll show you the end result. Okay, so I think I'm going to just pause here for a second after processing these two projects of the uh, side of the building here. And this particular one is the textured mesh with the video. So extracting the frames, I chose two frames of every second for the video. So I got about 163 uh, frames out of this thing and it's okay. It's not too bad, but you will see a difference when I bring up the one with the photo. So for example, where we have this little uh, concrete barrier um, here, retaining wall uh, on the side. Well, there's obviously a problem here on the top. You can see that it's just not formed properly. Uh, there's some problems with the mesh um, on these doors. I could probably fix that just by uh, closing some holes and things like this, but um, there is you can see it's just it's just not as crisp in some areas there's a little bit more uh distortion like if you look at the trailer here okay in some places um not all that great but it's okay i mean you know if you were just trying to build a model overall uh, this wouldn't be too bad and just um so everybody is so we're on the same page i'm using all the default settings i'm not trying to make this um uh you know, work any better or worse for all the projects. So I'm going to be using the exact same default settings for every single project just to see what it spits out. So let me bring up the other project with the photos and let's have a look at how that compares to uh, the video here. So now we have the project where we had all of the photos. And so I'm going to shut off the camera positions here. But if you look, um, you know, here, you can see that it's a little more crisp in many areas. The photos look a little bit better, higher textures and that sort of thing. Um, you know, the retaining wall here was formed much, much better. So I'm, I'm pretty good with this project, uh, for what it is. And, and this was, relatively quick as well so we have to keep that in mind now one way to improve this would be to take more photos so i you know i just went up and down the building and i think i have maybe 30 photos in total and then uh yeah well here i have 34 sorry so actually i have 34 so you know if i had doubled that number i probably would have had a little bit better result and especially in the areas where i have you know some more detail that i want um some little some of these little uh, uh line of sight issues here uh, some of the areas that are uh, hidden or where I, I need more detail just more photos get closer and I think this would have worked out um, even better but for this uh, like I said for how long it took me uh, just to get the main area here that's not too bad at all I think it looks pretty good um, you know using the default settings and again more photos would have been better uh, if I'd gone back maybe done some uh, uh, changes to the settings then that would have been okay too 
All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to process the parking lot. Same thing. We're going to take the photos, process those, and then we're going to take the video and process the video and then look at the difference between the two as well. So we are done this second set and I have to tell you, I am really impressed with what the video has done here because it actually looks better to me than the images. And let me just have a look here. You'll see that, you know, we came down this far and we started from this end here and you can see the textured mesh looks pretty good here. And, um, I think we're going to discuss this in a bit, but let's, let's look at the, uh, images of the same part of the parking lot and let me open this and we're going to go to the that's the building we're going to go to the lot oh actually you know what i better save this just to make sure seven lot and these were from the uh video okay great let me open up that other one okay this is the lot images so i'm going to shut off the there we go the camera positions and that doesn't look too bad, actually. I can't say that it's worse. Let me just see. Well, I don't know. For some reason, the video looked almost as good as the images here. And so, at least in the previous project, we could tell there was a lot more distortion from the video. And these are just the images. So that doesn't look too bad either. And you'll see that I have 22 photos here versus uh, a lot more frames from the video. So let's, uh, yeah, that's not too bad, but let's talk about a couple of things here and you know, how we might be able to improve this in the future. Well, one thing is for sure, and I just gave it away and that was the number of photographs. You know, when I'm dealing with video, um, I think I had about 164 frames or something like that in the previous project here. And here I've got 22. Now, normally if I had 164 photographs, uh, you know, much higher resolution, I would have done a better job. But photographs give you the benefit of being able to take less photographs and still being able to reconstruct, you know, the area, uh, just like video. Video is naturally going to be a, a smaller frame size, but the benefit is that if you're at 30 or 60 frames a second, well, you're going to be getting a lot of frames. And uh, sometimes it's a balancing act between the number of frames that you extract versus the resolution of the image. So uh, more photos would have helped for sure in this particular case. Um, the other one is uh, that the camera position was different here. Now, I don't know if you recall, but before I started the ground, what I did was I moved the GoPro camera to point downwards a bit more. And when I was doing the building, I was sort of at about a 45 degree angle. So uh, a little bit different. So the camera is going to be facing the ground. Um, it is on an angle, but not as much as the um, uh, that it was for the building. And so in the building, you saw that there were some distortions with the video, but the images were better. Here, uh, I have to say, you know, the images and the video are both quite good. So uh, they both did pretty good here. But uh, keep in mind, camera position is another thing. Of course, having a better camera, better resolution, better photographs, that is also helpful. And, um, you know, just taking a quick look here, if I look at one of the frames 
from the video, you'll see that it's not as wide a field of view. Okay. It's not, it's not, it's definitely not as much. And when I go back to the lot, you'll see that the photographs, okay, are a much wider field of view and, you know, they're capturing a lot more here. So, um, you know, st the stuff that's farther away or whatever may be somewhat problematic. Whereas if you're just focusing on the area of interest, that might have been better. So a little bit of a difference between the, uh, field of view and what you're capturing in the photograph versus what you're capturing in the video. Now, there are other things like camera shake and stuff like that that uh, can, you know, be offset by, you know, having a, a better uh, pole that's more stable, even having a gimbal. You could put a gimbaled camera on there. But then, of course, that's starting to get into a complicated area. You're getting more equipment and that sort of thing, too. But uh, yeah, so keep those things in mind. The number of photographs, you know, when we did the uh, the building, we had about 34 photos versus well over 160 frames. When we did the parking lot, we had 22 images or photographs versus 164 uh, frames from the video. The camera position, so making sure that you're nice and perpendicular to a surface, that seems to help as well. Um, also having a better camera in the case of a GoPro, you know, it's not too bad, but of course, if we had a nice digital SLR camera, we would have had a much better reconstruction. Okay, well look folks, GoPro Pole, uh, not a lot of, you know, expensive equipment to use. You can still do what you could do, for example, with a drone that, a drone that was flying low. And I think it's a great option for a lot of people that are doing photogrammetry. Thanks for watching, click 3D, and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care, bye-bye.